Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. Now, in our last episode, we tested a bunch of different filters on some cars on a dyno to see if they make any difference to performance. We got a lot of comments from people saying that if you want to see any real difference, up to 20%, you need to install a cold air intake. Now, a cold air intake, no one on the internet can really agree what it is, but there's two definitions that people can kind of agree on. One of them is a bit of tube or piping that's getting some air from outside of the car and feeding it into the filter, and the other one is actually relocating your pod filter away from the engine down in the bumper so it's sucking in nice cold air and apparently it can make up to 20% extra power Martin. That's right so today we're going to try a bunch of different setups to see if they can actually make 20% gain. Or any gain Martin, any gain at all. I'll be impressed with 5%. I'll be impressed with 7 Okay done, 5 and 7 If we get that we're going to say everyone buy a cold air intake. Done, let's check it out. Mad. In our last episode, we ran pod filters on a variety of different cars on the dyno so we could see how they stack up against the factory airbox. On our 1.3 litre naturally aspirated car, we lost power with both pods and on the turbo car, we had no significant gains. So we're down at Port Hacking Automotive and we're going to be running an R34 Skyline on the dyno to see if a cold air intake makes any difference. This Mario Kart Edition R34 Skyline has a 2.5 litre inline 6 cylinder turbocharged engine and a catback exhaust. We're going to start off with the factory airbox so we can get a baseline of what kind of power the car's making. The factory setup also includes a snorkel which feeds cold air into the airbox. Okay, with a stock setup, it's time for our first run. We've got 165.5 kilowatts. We're going to do another run. The factory system peaks at around 169 kilowatts. Time to put on a pod and see what kind of power we don't get. We've got 167.6 kilowatts, which is in line with the results of our last episode. Less power than the factory airbox. We're logging temperatures on the dyno, and you can see the ambient temperature's 15 degrees, while the air going into the pod is around 24 degrees during the run. The pod's coming off, and we're going to do a run with no filter at all to see if there's any restriction. Under the hood quickly heats up to 34 degrees, but once the dyno fan switched on, it comes all the way back down to 24 again. With no filter at all, we've got around the same figures as the factory system, proving that a clean filter is not a restriction on this setup. We're doing another run to confirm our results and we've got 168.4, which is less than our factory airbox with the snorkel. What we're doing now is removing the headlight. If you've ever been to the drags, you've probably seen that some people remove the headlight on the side of the car that has the filter. Uh, this is kind of like a cold air feed, so with this gone, uh, the industrial fan in front of the dyno is going to be sending cold air, 15 degrees ambient temperature, straight through this space into the filter. We're going to see if that cools the air down going into the car and if that turns into more power. So that is about as cold as your feed is going to get. We're going to be going directly through here into the pod filter. Obviously this setup is not ideal for the street. Driving around without a light at night means you can't see the zombies, but it is going to give us an idea if a direct feed of cold air actually makes a difference to our power.
We've got 169.8 kilowatts, almost exactly the same as our factory setup. Basically the only real difference that you can see is that on the inlet temperature with the headlight in place, the, the temperature was rising. Without the, um, without the headlight in place, it's a flat line. Um, so it has had some effect on it. So it's more steady, it's getting the same air temperature the whole way through. That's right. So without the cold air feed, the air going into the pod is heating up over the rev range, whereas with the cold air feed, it's staying at a constant 25 degrees. But this hasn't translated into more power. All right, so the ambient temperature out here is 15 degrees. The temperature where the filter sits is 25, but the temperature after the turbo and the intercooler is staying at around 42, no matter what's on the front of the car. We're putting a cover on the pod to see if it makes any difference. We've got 166.5 kilowatts and the second run shows 167.3, less than our factory airbox. The results of all the runs we've done so far with the different filter setups have been almost exactly the same and only a couple of kilowatts different between each of them. So it's time to try something a bit more extreme. We're making a custom front mounted pod filter. So this really uh, not only represents the ultimate in cold air intake, but it also is like an umbilical cord between car and owner. There they are, look at that. Mame, mame. Nah. In this test, the filter is nowhere near the engine. It's getting air directly from the fan. If we don't see gains here, then cold air intakes are well and truly busted. Extra three kilowatts, but is it repeatable? Yes, we've got a three kilowatt gain across the rev range. It's not a lot, but it is an increase in power. Okay, so with the factory airbox and a new filter, we peaked at around 169 kilowatts. Now with our custom front mounted pod filter, Best case scenario, we're getting 173. Now we know from our last episode, Pod Filters Myth Busted, that you need a 10% gain in power for it to actually be noticeable. Now with our differences between the cold air intake and the factory airbox, Marty, we are talking about a measly 1.7% of an increase. You're just never gonna feel it. But it is an increase, and we've been able to see it repeatedly on the dyno that if you change up this setup, you can actually make power, and every bit counts, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, I guess if you're chasing dyno numbers and you're up around 198, 199, and 200 is your goal, then putting something like this in there, probably, you know, it's probably gonna get you over the line, depending on what kind of car you've got. But in our test with our car, certainly, I don't think it's worth it. That's right, there are some other considerations which are important. If if you're putting a pod filter right down near the bottom of your car and you're likely to suck up water and hydraulic your engine, you're making zero kilowatts, which for me kind of ruins it. Yeah. And I guess you've got to weigh out the risk, you know, is it worth that risk for making that 1.7%? Plus if you're in New South Wales, totally defectable, you're kind of getting the attention that you don't want. For me, unless you're making serious power and someone can prove with quantifiable evidence that it's power that you're going to feel, I'm not sold on cold air intakes, Marty. Neither. Kebab? I'm going to get a falafel. Mad.